Greetings, this is Greg for Tesla Fan Insight. My post today focuses on uh, the Hyperloop and why, it, why and how it impacts Tesla. Bonjour, wie geht's, wie steht's noch im Ausfahrbahn in Strasvice? Ni hao ma. Bonjour, guten Tag. This is Greg for Tesla Fan Insight. The big news today, uh, July 21, 2017, is that Tesla recently announced that, uh, or, or Elon Musk uh, yesterday announced that uh, he has tentative approval, at least verbal approval, to begin the process of the implementation of the Hyperloop. Um, I was kind of uh, surprised by this. Well, I just I shouldn't be surprised because he has the, the boring company going and the Hyperloop kind of fits into that concept. Um, there's, a, there's kind of good news about this relative to Tesla and bad news about this. And I think it's kind of interesting to note what those are. So for those of you who don't know about the Hyperloop, uh, te uh, Elon Musk has an idea for transportation where you dig these long tunnels and then you put pods in those tunnels that allow three to seven people to enter and ride um, long distances at uh, very, very high uh, rates of speed through those tunnels. Um, this project kind of works nicely with something that he's calling the boring company because uh, one of the challenges out there is the cost uh, related to uh, digging tunnels and um, and sort of getting to your end destination rapidly. So his boring technology allows you to both dig the tunnel and uh, build a reinforcing concrete sleeve for that tunnel at the same time. So it expedites the process of tunnel building. And uh, Elon Musk is of the opinion that this is uh, the method that he'd like to execute uh, uh, first in Los Angeles where he started testing it and then start to move off to other areas. His latest announcement is tentative agreements to start the process on that in the Los Angeles area and then between Los Angeles and San Francisco as well as New York to DC at the same time. Um, I was intrigued by this because after I heard about this, I, you know, I was thinking, what does this have to do with Tesla Fan Insight? And uh, why is it good news? Why is it bad news? Um, in theory, uh, the bad news here is that uh, Tesla is um, having the division of the CEO's attention between uh, several of the projects that he has going, SpaceX, the Boring Company, you know, what he's doing with uh, artificial intelligence, et cetera, et cetera. Um, all of these projects take some time and energy, and he had stated that he was going to avoid this, uh, adding more projects because he was uh, completely spent on time already. Um, I was intrigued because I kind of have glanced at the project, maybe put a couple hours into figuring out what he's doing, and I would say that... Um, I think it's a good idea in general that he's talking about, um, but uh, I don't think it makes sense on a few different levels. Um, so number one is the fact that uh, in order to get high speed, you need uh, a minimization of friction. So magnetic levitation is part of the process of getting high speed because you just, you don't have contact um, the Washington DC corridor, there's already um, a defined sort of train line between the two. And so I think the boring process he's described would definitely work. What doesn't make sense to me is instead of waiting for 10 or 15 years to get that project done, if you're able to figure out a way to build an infrastructure that allows a maglev to run on that uh, be it side by side to the current tracks or in some other creative way, you already have the right of way. And it's a lot easier to bore uh, through 
through the air rather than boring underground. It just takes less time, even if you decided to build a tunnel for it. Uh, an above ground tunnel would actually be um, not that aesthetically pleasing, but it would take a lot less time to do. So I think the lower cost and the time to market uh, of just boring a regular tunnel makes sense. According to the studying I've done of what's happening in Japan and in, in uh, China, the, uh, the trains that are maglev in those places are running at the high end in the 450 miles an hour zone. So in theory, um, New York City is uh, 350 miles or so from, uh, from Washington, D.C. So if you went on a maglev train between the two, in theory, you could get that trip done in a little less than an hour, let's say 45 minutes. If you do the Hyperloop, you can get that trip done in 29 minutes. So there's a 15 minute gap there between the two, but you have the benefit with the train of, you can have more people on the train, you can get up and get a meal if you'd like, or hit the bathroom. There's all these things you can do in the train you can't do in a Hyperloop. So hopefully he builds the tunnel and uh, my hope is that they throw a maglev in there uh, of a regular train and allow it to do the job because, uh, you know, I think it's a, a more efficient use of the space. Um, so one, I th I'd say I don't agree in terms of what he wants to do. I think a, a maglev is a better deal and the difference in time between the two is negligible. Um, but it gives a lot more flexibility to passengers in terms of how they use that facility. The second thing about this whole Maglev, or I'm sorry, Hyperloop and Boring Company and even SpaceX, some of the other things that Elon is working on that I find interesting is that on initial glance, one would say this is a really bad deal for Tesla because uh, Elon's attention is divided among all these projects and therefore he can't be as efficient as he might be in terms of the needs of Tesla. So I bring this up because what I'm fascinated by is that over the next, let's say, two years, um, Tesla is going to lose at least 20, if not 50 percent of the executives at the top of the company. And the reason is that, he, number one, he's hiring CEO caliber and quality people and just like Google before him if you're part of an executive team that's impacting an industry in the way that Tesla is um, it results in a whole bunch of competitors and other entities eager to attract that talent to have both the experience that they've had and the knowledge of what Tesla's going to do baked into their being uh, uh, at those new companies so, um, and then the other piece of it is that these folks are really good and have made a ton of money, so they got to figure out whether or not they want to do, you know, 15, 20 hour days when they've got millions of dollars in stock in the bank. Um, it's just, you know, hard to want to push yourself that hard uh, when, you know, you have to neglect your family and the rest of your life in order to be a part of this revolution. So I think it limits, uh, how the longevity of how and why people want to do it and the amount of money that competitors are throwing at them because of the value of where the, the, the market Tesla is creating and entering is so great. So I, um, so I kind of bring up what's happening with the executive situation at Tesla because um, when you have sort of CEO quality people in the top 50% or 50 positions within your company, um, those people will or will not choose to stick around. And I think that not having uh, Elon Musk in the building on a regular basis is actually a really good deal because he's a smart guy. He's a part of a lot of what's going on right now that's awesome. And it's sort of in the best interest of the company that he not be on campus on a regular basis because he's going to start he's going to start coming up with really good ideas that will distract the company from what they've got to get done 
So by being in touch by phone, doing his board meetings, you know, once a week, once every other week, uh, sort of in the face of the executives there, I think this is um, kind of a good deal for the company for him to be gone and busy with other projects so he doesn't invent new ways to sort of suck the life out of people who are working really hard to execute the vision that he's laid down. And it also sort of clears the way for their decision making to be on display for Musk and for the rest of the staff. So when you're in a situation where you're making uh, big decisions and um, being backed up by being critiqued by Musk and the rest of the board, uh, I think it's uh, a really great testing ground you know, for executives to transition from being an analyzer to being an implementer of your vision of what might happen in the future. So bottom line is that I think it's great that, uh, you know, there are things to distract Elon Musk like um, the, the Hyperloop. Um, I think the Gullwing doors are a great example of why you do not want Elon in your face on a regular basis because those gull wings are really cool. They look great, um, but they delayed uh, the delivery of the vehicle by a year. So the headaches that it created for the stockholders and everybody else was great. And Elon Musk has uh, said himself that his perfectionism um, can be a, a disaster for the company. So he has to rein himself in to get away from this perfectionism going forward. Um, so, conclusion is that um, I think Hyperloop is a good idea, kind of, it kind of makes sense. Um, bad for Tesla because Musk isn't around on more ideas like that that are being implemented. Good for Tesla because if he is around too much, um, he could potentially end up screwing up the company with good ideas that the company chases uh, that gets them distracted from implementing the already uh, challenging vision that he's laid down for uh, for his employees. Thank you for taking time out once again uh, to visit with us. This is Greg for Tesla and uh, Fan Insight. Um, please like and subscribe. Au revoir, tchuss, max gut, au revoir, la hitraot, choda, hafez, shalom, and uh, thanks for your time for day today. Look forward to our next conversation.